In this video, we're going to take a look at translating between propositions and everyday language. Uh, we're going to use the English language here, uh, but this can be done in, in any natural language. One of the great things about logic is there's no ambiguity in logic. We have these symbols that you're getting familiar with, the and symbol, the implications. Everybody can interpret these the same way. But when we say things in everyday language, sometimes the, the words we use can be interpreted in different ways. And one of the big challenges is taking something you mean uh, in everyday language and translating it into a proposition. So we're going to take a look at some simple examples of how we could turn these propositions P, you set your alarm, Q, you are late for class, R, you make it to the bus on time, how we could translate a logical proposition, a compound proposition here that uses those simple propositions. So we're going to do this in both directions. First, we're going to go from the logical expression like we have here into an English sentence. And then on the next screen, we'll look at translating from English sentences back into logical propositions. And it's important that you can do this both ways to get a solid understanding of how this would be done. OK, so for this first example, you know, first we want to make sure we know how to read all the symbols. Um, the arrow here is actually the same as you see in your book as the solid single arrow uh, on the computer. It shows up as a double arrow, but I don't want you to think that's a different symbol. It really is the same symbol that you're used to as an implication. Um, the way we would read this one literally in logical terminology would be not P implies Q. Okay? So if you wanted to sort of work this out the same way you would work an algebra problem out to sort of get some partial credit or build yourself up to the answer, you could start off by saying not P implies Q. Okay? But we usually read the implication in everyday language as an if-then statement. So we could also translate this to uh, if not P then Q. And, you know, when you're talking to a mathematician or a computer scientist, they're pretty familiar with the word implies. Uh, it might make sense to sort of use that more technical language. But in everyday language, when you're talking to your friends or colleagues or family, you probably don't use the word implies. You would probably say if, p, then, q. So while technically we could use this implies here, we want to try to make these as sort of typical sentences as we could. So we'll start thinking about this as if not P, then Q. But again, we don't usually say not P. We negate the concept of P. So now what we need to do is a, a basic mathematical skill here is to substitute. In this case, our proposition P means you set your alarm. So what you would want to do is take the expression you set your alarm and substitute it in for P the same way you would want to take the proposition you are late for class and drop that in to Q. Okay. Now negating P, if P means you set your alarm, negating that would mean you don't set your alarm. So the way we would translate this proposition not P implies Q would be to say if you don't set your alarm that's the not P part, then Q, you are late for class. Okay? Now you might say you're going to be late for class or you will be late for class. Again, you know, in everyday language there are equivalent ways to say the same thing, but if we want to be technical we'd say if you don't set your alarm then you are late for class or you will be late for class. Okay. So that would be the answer for the first proposition. Now when we go to look at this second proposition here, it's got a little bit more going on. It still has an implication right here. But the hypothesis, that's the beginning part, the P part of the P implies Q statement here, is actually a compound proposition in itself. It's an AND statement. Okay. So if we wanted to write this out, we would say if P and Q, and we'd sort of think about it in the parentheses, then not R. 
So how would we think about putting that into a sort of nice compact sentence? If you don't set your alarm and you are late for class, then you will not make it to the bus on time. Okay, I'm going to type this one out because I think it'll be quicker than actually writing it. If you set your alarm and you are late for class, then you, I'd say probably using the right tense, didn't make it to the bus on time. Okay. Now sometimes when you're translating these sentences, you might sort of think the sentence doesn't really make any sense or it doesn't follow basic logical rules. That's not really the purpose of the exercise. The purpose of the exercise is can you translate the sentence even if the sentence is nonsensical or illogical in some way. So we have the P here, you set your alarm, the Q, you're late for class, and then the not R is you won't or you didn't, right, again, using the appropriate English verb here, in this case probably didn't make it to the bus on time. Now these translations are challenging. Uh, sometimes they're challenging for even native speakers of a language, and um, many of you may not be native English speakers, so that may add a little bit uh, of more difficulty. But if you try to take this in-between step of translating in basic logical terms and then trying to substitute essentially in, um, you know, we'll be pretty flexible with how close you are grammatically. Uh, we just want you to be able to get the basic idea. Okay, so uh, now we're going to take a look at this in the opposite direction. Okay. We are going to look at uh, three different propositions. I will get enough sleep at night. I will be tired tomorrow. I will be cranky tomorrow. And start with these English sentences here and try to translate them into logical expressions. Okay, so uh, if I get enough sleep at night, and the first thing you want to do is notice there's an if here. Okay, now it is lacking, this sentence is lacking the word then, but we say that sometimes. Sometimes when we speak to each other we say, if you want to do this, you better do that. So in those cases you won't always see the word then, but I think it's implied that there's a then here. So you could sort of think of a P implies Q scenario here, where the getting enough sleep at night would be the P, uh, and then in this case, the, the Q I'm representing here is a generic Q. It doesn't really relate to this Q and R over here. There's actually another, comp, another uh, logical connective here, the and. So you have this um, won't be tired and you have this cranky tomorrow, okay? Now using the letters that we have up here, um, the P says I will get enough sleep at night, so if I get enough sleep at night, that's a P. Right? Then I'm gonna have the then, which is an implies. Now the won't be tired is a, ref a reference to Q. Q says I will be tired. Saying I won't be tired really means not Q. Okay, then we have the and, and then we have the I will be cranky tomorrow, which is R. Okay, so taking all the colors out of this so that it's a little bit easier to see, you would have basically P implies parentheses, not Q and R, and that would be the final answer here. Right? You won't be tired and cranky tomorrow, right? implies that both of these will follow from P. Okay? So again, you know, you can try to sort of underline or circle or, or find the key words in the expression. And when you see an if, you know there has to be a then even if you don't see the word then. Okay? And this again is one of the challenges of the English language as opposed to logic where there is no ambiguity. Okay? So looking at this last example here, I won't get enough sleep at night and I will be tired tomorrow, but I won't be cranky. Now the word but is not one of the basic logical connectives that we use, the and and the or, but it is a conjunction, which is an and. But is another way to say and, but we usually use the word but instead of and if the thing that follows is sort of contrary to what you would expect. So this, you really need to think about a but as an and, and then it becomes much easier to translate. 
So I won't get enough sleep tonight, that's not P. And I will be tired tomorrow, that's Q. But, and I won't be cranky tomorrow, that's not R. Now, do you need parentheses here? Probably. Um, basically, all these connectives are binary operators, which means they take two arguments. So we could arbitrarily, you know, put parentheses down here. We could have also put them over here. You'll learn uh, the associative property later, which is something we have for algebra applies. So it really doesn't matter so much. And for this exercise, I would be fine without parentheses. Um, one last note, just to keep in mind, it probably won't be a big issue this semester, but in the future, uh, there are actually several different ways in English to say if P then Q. Right? P implies Q is one of the technical ways, but we could also say Q when P. So we have Q when P, we have P only if Q. Uh, these last two are a little bit more technical. Q is necessary for P. P is sufficient for Q. Those are things that you might see more in an upper level math course. Um, but just as an example, if I go out to eat, then it is the weekend. So we could say going out to eat implies it's the weekend. Over here, I go out to eat only if it's the weekend. Well, that's the same as P implies Q, only if, right? So that's the same as O implies W. And on the weekend is when I go out. So Q when P is the same as P implies Q. This would also logically be equivalent to O implies W. Okay. They take some practice. Uh, we probably won't get too complicated here, but one of the challenges as you move higher up is trying to take something you have in a common language for you and then trying to write it precisely in logic. So it gives me some practice and see how you do.